This is the pose, how it all started. The bumbling biochemist on a mission to make biochemistry fun and accessible for all. So a lot of people have asked about the cape. Like, what's the deal with the cape? Um, so today, since it's my la hopefully my last um, weekly briefing before becoming an actual doctor of bumbling biochemist, I thought it'd be a good time to reflect on the last um, five years about the, the why I do the cape thing um, and also um, some how much it's meant to me to have this um, student ambassador relationship with the IUBMB um, and how it really is was this like huge confidence boost for me and how really how this whole cape thing is about confidence and kind of being able to bridge that gap um, between being like it's okay to be a serious scientist and also be fun and use terms that make sense and don't aren't all like weird and jargony and stuff like if you don't know a term that's not because you're stupid it's because you've never learned that term before it's like a different language you need to translate and like I don't think it's wrong to just like talk kind of casually about scientist stuff um and I like that and the cape kind of helps me like transition between the two so I don't like embarrass myself in front of when I'm supposed to be doing serious scientist things uh like one time when I had to like rewrite a report because it was too casual um so that was kind of embarrassing but anyway okay let's get back to that origin story so the bubbling biochemist goes back to the summer after I graduated from undergrad. Um, and so I was staying, I stayed around on campus. I was working um, in the lab and I was helping mentor another undergrad student. And so I had a little more downtime on my hands than I would have if I were like doing the experiments all myself and that sort of thing. And so there were some way steps and anyway, I. I had been trying for a while to like tell my parents and my friends some stuff about my research that I was doing and all this awesome science stuff I was doing and like you get that oh that's nice um uh, yeah like they but is like they and I was like wait this is really really awesome and really really exciting and they're not seeing that's really really awesome and really really exciting why is that and so I mean, then I realized like, well, they don't have the background knowledge that you need to truly appreciate these things. And that's no fault of their own. They just don't have it. And so part of me was like, well, I don't want to just be like boring them with stuff if they're not interested. But then another part of me is like, well, maybe they're not interested because they don't know it's something to be interested in, you know? So it's kind of this balance. Like I never want to like force information on anyone if they're not interested, but I want people to know that it's something that they could be interested in. And if they are potentially, and then if they know that they could be interested in it and they are interested in it, I want them to be able to understand it. So that's basically my whole like dealio. Um, so I started trying to think of ways in which I could engage um, people. And so, one day, I just, there was a lab coat lying around. There was some graduated cylinders on my Leninger. Well, I don't, ha I have my actual copy. I keep it at home with me, safekeeping. Um, but, so, a little printout. Um, but, basically, yeah. So, I just invented this alter ego um, and became the bumbling biochemist. And so, it was a kind of a way to make things fun and exciting and engaging. Um, so, I started it out, I actually had like a different Instagram account, just like my personal account, and it was just like a few friends and some Facebook posts and stuff. Um, and it was really nothing major. And then I just kind of like, when I started my blog, and I don't know, it just kind of like blew up into something I would never have like imagined. Um, and in a way, the cape kind of allowed it all to happen, not because, I don't think that people like, view my post or whatever just because I'm wearing a cape because like most people are like what the deal with the cape like why are you wearing a cape um but the cape kind of allows me to adopt this alter ego um that can is more free to feel like it feels like a different person kind of so because I'm naturally like super introverted have super low co self-confidence like this thought of me like talking to thousands of people around the world like is not something that's comfortable with me 
um, but the thought of the bumbling biochemist doing it is a lot easier. Um, and so kind of like I put on this cape and I just like become like this other person I can kind of, I'm free to be bumbly. Like I feel like, so yesterday I was giving a practice talk for my thesis, um, defense and I got my feedback from my peers afterward, my lab mates afterwards. They're like, yeah, you really shine when you're like answering questions and when you're not like looking at your slides or anything, you're just talking to us. And that's, I think for me, part of it is because if it's something that be, that needs to be like, but you have tons of time to prepare and people think you should be like super prepared and you should know everything last down to the last detail. Like if it's a written report or something, and there's a typo in it or whatever, like, why didn't you catch a typo? Well, you, it's a lot harder to catch a typo if, well, if you're like, you're talking just like off the cuff, or if you're just like writing a blog post where it's clear that you're not trying to edit it super well. Um, so that's always been easier for me when there's less pressure of being about be, tr needing to feel like I need to be perfect. Like I feel that in my head or whatever, there's less, pressure to be perfect when you're kind of like on the spot or you're obviously being spontaneous and you're obviously being in this way that doesn't care about perfection like it's okay to be bumbly like that's natural and so for me the bumbling biochemist like persona is really kind of just like allowing me to adopt that more free sense of just sharing my love of science in a way that's not conventional and it is more like me um and it's just how things make sense for me and i wanted to be able to share how things make sense to me in case it couldn't help things make sense for other people so i've kind of i'm kind of in this awkward position um well not awkward position i don't know i guess i just never really fit in anywhere um so I don't really consider myself like a psychom or whatever. Like, I guess there's different meanings or whatever. I, I just, what I really want to do is I want to teach undergraduates. Um, that's like my lifetime goal. I want to be a professor at a small undergraduate um, college, hopefully like a liberal arts college. Um, like, so I went to St. Mary's College of California, which I really, really, really love. Um, and it was just like this amazing experience. Um, speaking of which, um, I think a liberal arts school is a really um, great and under like valued, I guess, um, thing for a scientist. Um, so I know there's a lot of, I was worried when I was applying to grad schools and that sort of thing, like what are they gonna think? I come from this small liberal arts school, not like a big wig research institution or whatever, but you get like one-on-one -on -one training with the professors and stuff like small classes and all that, that's really great. And it's also really great that you're forced to take all these classes like outside of your major and you get this really diverse worldview. Like my favorite was we had this like seminar class where we like read texts and we met in like a circle um, with people from all different majors and we were talking about the text and you really get a sense of like how different people see the world and you get these different ideas about how to interpret the world and that sort of thing. And I think that's really Really helped shape me as the per both the person that I am and the scientist type that I am and like the teacher that I am like I know sometimes I would use weird analogies and that sort of thing and some people hate some scientists are like no anthropomorphizing and I'm like well that's kind of we're humans like that's our worldview and so we don't want to like force our constrain ourselves by our worldview but if we can introduce analogies and that sort of thing to help make concepts clearer then I don't see what the problem is that is. Um, but anyway, that's another story. But so basically, where was I in all of this? Um, yeah, so I want to be like a teacher like that. Um, and so when I was an undergraduate, there would be times when there were concepts that weren't quite clear to me or there were concepts that were kind of more advanced than the textbook that or the textbook will go into or the or at least like the class will go into or whatever but then if you try to get more information you get these like super crazy complicated like scientific jargon filled um texts um like research articles and at that point i'm like i don't have the skills to really like read and interpret and understand all of this um so i really wanted something to kind of like bridge the gap so with traditional like when you think of traditional psychom, it's often like people, 
talking to like a super general audience. Um, and so I totally admire all of those people like that, like seriously explaining things to like, sometimes the, simplifying everything down to the basics is the most complicated thing you can do especially when you're like in science training and you learn like well there's this caveat and this caveat and this caveat and not into this oh there's an exception so it was like and then you're trying to like condense it down to one second sentence and you're like how the heck do i say this in a way that's not going to like well actually you know um so yeah like huge props to those people um but i really was looking for something like in between um so something that really gets to the details like i introduce those i want to introduce the jargon so that you can use the jargon you can understand the jargon when you come across the jargon so i don't want to just be like oh yeah it's this like worker in your cell or whatever like i want to actually say okay well it's an enzyme, which is a pr probably, a, it's this protein that does this thing and does this because, you know, so that people know like what these different terms mean um, if they come across them or if they want to use them. And there really needed to be something I felt to kind of like help bridge the gap between the super um, simplified version um, and the super jargony version. And so I was like, my whole time, I like the whole bumbling biochemist thing, I've always wanted to help bridge that gap between the two and really be that source that I felt was kind of, that I had been searching for. Um, and so like, this is totally in no way like saying anything bad about my professors at St. Mary's. I absolutely learned so much for them, but um, the, there's just like this, it's kind of like gap between like the undergraduate level of things and then the graduate level and like when you're in undergraduate and you're trying to get a little more information it's hard um and so my professors were a great help and stuff with that um so i'm not trying to say anything bad about that um but just like when i was trying to find like other sources um of trying to um get concepts in different ways and that sort of thing that yeah that's where like the, i felt that there was this gap that i couldn't find um and also just the idea that, I guess being at a liberal arts school in part, you get this, you realize that there are so many ways to say different things and there's so many ways to really understand and take a worldview about different things. And so you see like the same sort of thing being done, like the same messages being conveyed in art, being conveyed in poetry, being conveyed in essays, you know, it's just like, all of these different forms and with science it always just seemed like it was constrained in this like precise uh jargony like serious sounding um terms and so i wanted to kind of be able to talk about science more casually but still with that level of seriousness um and so i worried i was really scared when i first started um doing my bumbly stuff here. Um, I was worried that I would not be taken seriously as a scientist. Um, so in the, so now I wear my cape openly in the lab, um, uh, because everyone knows, well, I mean, like I don't wear it all the time. I only wear it when I do these posts and I typically do the posts in the early morning before anyone even gets in. Um, but in the early days, um, of being in the lab, I was really afraid of being caught, and so there were lots of times where I'd be like, in the middle of a post, I'd be like, that? Well, now I don't have to do that anymore, which is good. Um, but, and I was afraid that if like my PI, so like my boss or whatever found out that she'd be like, yeah, you need to be focusing on your research like 100% of the time, like no doing any of this. Um, so actually I like way overwork myself because I do this all on top of all of the research. Like I don't slack off the research or the reading papers or the writing or anything at all, which is why I, like sometimes people also ask me like, why do you have bags under your eyes? Well, cause I'm working my butt off anyway. Okay. So yeah, so the deal, so, but so I was really worried and I hadn't even told my PI that I was doing all of this stuff and I was just kind of keeping it like under the wraps. I'm not sure how it happened, but I got involved with the ASBMB, so the American 
Society of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. They're like um, science outreach and science communication um, group who were super great, shout out. Um, but they invited me to give a talk at the annual conference that I was going to um, on like science communication and on the like what I was doing. Um, and it was just this really great opportunity. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I was already going to the meeting, so it wasn't like, whatever. But anyway, my PI, uh, I, I hadn't even told my PI because I was like afraid she'd be, uh, she still, I didn't, I didn't know if she, she didn't, I don't think she knew yet. This was really early days. Um, and so I went, um, and I gave this talk and I get this email from her and she was like, oh, that's so awesome. And I was like, Oh my God, seriously? So that was like this huge confidence boost that she knew she was okay with it. All was cool. Um, but I still had this feeling like other people might not take me seriously if they knew that I do this thing. Um, and because it just like in my head, it's always, I've thought about scientists as being really serious, like, you talk in like the centrifuges were spun as blah 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 for this event. Three microliters were then transferred into the pipette. You know, um, not that it's not like wrong to talk in like a dry science, whatever. But I was just afraid that people would think that I wasn't like a serious scientist or that I was slacking off from my actual work if I took like an hour out of my day. Um, to help teach people. Um, but then I was like, well, it's also an investment in like my future. Like I'm practicing teaching people. Um, also I had like an NSF like grant and like part of the, a huge part of that's like, what's your broader impacts? Um, and so I'm like, you said you wanted creative broader impacts. Um, I got some for you. Um, so that kind of helped me like assuage my like feelings of like lab guilt or whatever for not being productive enough even though I was already like not slacking off at all it's it's all just in my brain and so I'm sorry if I'm like trying to make if I'm making people like stressed out about how much they should be doing or not it's all just like in my brain like I feel like I constantly should be doing more okay but anyway back to the cake back to this okay so I so I was glad that my PI was on board um but I still wasn't sure how other people might react. Um, and so I was just feel like I was at this conference, I was surrounded by these amazing scientists and everything. And I just was like, well, can I really fit in? Like, will they actually like accept that I'm a serious scientist and I do this like, this like um, bumbling biochemist stuff. And then I'm in the hallway of the, or not the hallway, the atrium, whatever you call it, like the entrance way. I don't know. It's like this giant conference center. And then there's like this hotel and there's this entry room. Anyway, so I have my name badge on. Um, so that's who I am. Um, this person comes up to me and she's like, I don't remember. She was said, are you the bumbling biochemist or something along those lines? Like I follow you on Instagram and it's just amazing. And it turns out it's Dr. Alexander Newton, who at that time was the president elect of the IUBMB, so the International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. She's now the actual president. Woo -woo. Um, and so it turns out that she had been following me on Instagram. I think her daughter might have like gotten her onto me. I don't know. How, I don't remember exactly that part of the story. She can fill you in. But getting that message from her just like in the in the lobby out of the blue like I love what you're doing like you're really helping um like my students are help finding it helpful and all this stuff or things or whatever and here is this amazing serious senior scientist coming up to me little old grad student in like my first year of grad school or something I don't remember what it was it was really early on but, and she was giving me this like message, like I'm a senior scientist and I think what you're doing is awesome. Um, and 
that just gave me this giant confidence boost that I needed. Um, like, I mean, it's, it's really great for my PI to be on board. And I was like, yes. I mean, like, she's a super serious scientist and all these things, too. But, I mean, she knows me. She knows I'm working hard in the lab all the time. Um, and here was this incredible scientist just, like, comes up out of the blue to me and really just, like, welcomes me into this world of science. Like, senior scientists talking to me and admiring what I'm doing and it was just like ama amazing and it was just this incredible experience I never thought anything more would come of it and then a while later I get an email from her and she's like so I was wondering would you be interested in being a student ambassador for the IUBMB and um doing some weekly posts for us and I was like uh yes um and so that was like confidence boost up the wazoo and it, it just like turned into this incredible collaboration and so not only have I been doing these weekly briefings for them but I've gotten to know like Alexandra Newton more and she's just this amazing person and she's been this amazing mentor for me from afar um and she's given me all these opportunities she's helped me um connect with people around the world and like get my coronavirus post like translated into like a couple dozen languages and she's just been this really great friend um especially during some of the rough times in grad school when I didn't really know where to turn um she was always there um and she helped teach me um some of my like how to do like kinase assays and that sort of thing um and really, she's just been this amazing friend and supporter and mentor. And I'm just like, I'm so excited to that she's going to be at my defense or like, well, virtually on Tuesday. Um, and it really just means the world to me to have her support um, from that very early day um, to today. And I'm sorry, like, I'm just getting really emotional recently. Like this whole like five years, like has been a crazy um, roller coaster of ups and downs and I can't believe that I'm almost to the finish line um and so this was like a super rambly 20 minutes and I don't know if anyone's even still listening but if you are um thank you for everyone who supported me um I thank you for letting me bumble um for letting me be me um and appreciating me for who I am um and if I, I don't know like how to really end this post other than saying thank you. Um, and I look forward to next week's briefing when I will hopefully be a doctor. Um, and if I am, I will be sure to make, let you guys know. And if I'm not, I'll probably be crying in a ball in a corner, but Let's end on a happy note. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone, especially um, Dr. Alexandra Newton um, and my PI, Lima Joshua Tour, for supporting me as well along this journey and letting me do this all on the side. Um, so thank you, everybody. And oh, yeah, tomorrow my parents are coming. So yay. Okay.